but heaven help those of us who um, take exception to these new laws. <laughs> I mean, we're, we're going to pay if we don't go along with it. Well, because that, that's all they can do, right? The laws that deal with behaviors, all they can do is reward or punish people. That's right. all they can do. But that's the beast principle. Mm -hmm. so reward is something that makes you feel good. Punishment is something that makes you feel bad. All they can do is inflict something on your comfort level to gain control. That's because it's a beast principle. But see, that's not how God works. God reasons with you. And God actually invites you to fix your heart and mind so that you choose out of the love. Out of He pours his love in you. You start choosing out of the love that he put in you. To, to mm -hmm. You don't want just to perform on the outside. You want to be right on the inside. You want to love with all your machinery. You don't want to just fake it till you make it. Because there is no faking it till you make it with God. Paul, Paul says that in Galatians, that if I rebuild what I destroyed, I prove I am a lawbreaker. That's right. That's yeah. right. So if I rebuild, the, and what I destroyed is the old man, right? What's destroyed is the old man. If I rebuild what I destroyed, then I, I prove that I'm, I'm, not, I'm not interested in God's law coming alive in me. That's right. And Galatians is a short, short, condensed version of Romans. And it's, he, of course, Paul's preaching the same gospel. Thank you, Jim. So that's why he says in verse 8, by sin, take an occasion by the commandment. In other words, when I see the commandments of God, it nails me, that it wrought in me all manner of, of it showed the, the, the desires of my flesh that were against him. For without the law, sin is dead. If there's no law, then I think I'm fine. For I was alive without the law once, but when the commandment came, sin revives and I died. So I, I began to see myself as God saw me and I died. And verse 10, the commandment which was ordained to life, I found to be unto death. See, that's, that, that's significant. Mm -hmm. Because what happened when God created Adam and Eve, the law, that, the, the law that was to ordain life is that Adam and Eve, if they had never sinned, they would, all, they would give birth to children who were, did not have a fallen nature. And if Adam and Eve kept, Adam kept access to tree of life, then all his children would have had access to tree of life. And it was, it was a law of nature that you're going to have children in harmony with your nature. And so that law was ordained to give life. The sons and daughters of Adam were supposed to have access to tree of life. That's, that was what God ordained. But when sin came, then that law that which was, was, was supposed to bring life brought death. Now all the sons and daughters of Adam that are brought into existence, that now, they're, now they're, they're condemned to death. They're going to die. And, and it's from no choice of their own. It's, it's from the choice of Adam. And that's what he's saying there in that verse 10. By the way, that's why God had to intervene. Because now he has all these sons and daughters of Adam that have been created with a mind and a will, but they cannot exercise their will to be set free from sin because they're slaves to sin and they can't do anything about it. So because God is a God of love and God of justice, then God intervenes. He created the creatures with a, with a free will. He has to provide them an access, a way to, for them to exercise that free will for themselves. So by Jesus dying on the cross, Therefore, he set free all the sons and daughters of Adam. Now, you, now every son and daughter of Adam has the free will to choose for themselves whether they want to be children of the first Adam or they want to be children of the second Adam. So basically, he brought every child, of uh, every one of us brought back to the Garden of Eden, and we get the choice. Do we want to eat from the tree of knowledge of good and evil, or do we not want to eat? We get to make our own choice. And now the consequences of our choice are no longer somebody else's responsibility. My, the, my consequences are my responsibility. And for those who choose life, God will give life. And those who choose, those who choose death, God will give them over to what they've chosen. And there's no, nobody's, responsible, nobody's responsible for any, any individual choice except that individual. Do you, but do you know how many people say... Well, if my parents hadn't done this and that, or if whatever hadn't happened, I wouldn't be who I am. There's a point where they reach that God speaks to them and tells them that, 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 that's, that's death. We need no. to stop playing the victim role and take responsibility. That's, yeah, that's right. That's, that's a lie. That's a, that's a lie. 
right? Mm -hmm. Because the creator himself is standing and saying, come to me and I'll make you a new creation, right? Mm -hmm. And they're saying, well, poor me, I, you know, someone else did this to me and someone else did that to me, so I'm stuck. No, you're not stuck. That's a lie. Why are you telling yourself that lie? Right. Because if it's the truth, then you, you're you not responsible for making the right choice. That's why. That's right. And they don't, that's right. So they don't yeah. want to take responsibility for their choices. That's the victim mentality, right? right. By the way, that's the mentality that Satan is pushing over this whole world. And okay. that's the same mentality that, that the same lie that he gave to the angels, that they were somehow they were victims. That's what Satan, by the way, that mentality explain the principle behind it why the principle behind it is that when satan gets to convince you that you're a victim he moves you from reasoning from principle to function by your emotions mm -hmm. and therein he wins the battle because now you're making choices based on your emotions how it feels oh poor me no there's no such thing as poor you you're a son and daughter of god he created you for a purpose and he poured god poured all his gift through his son to save you there's nothing poor about you you are rich you have everything that God, God has provided, everything for you. What are you sitting around whining saying you're poor for? So that's a lie. Now, if you, if you, if you continue to believe the lie and you want to hold on to that lie, that's your choice. But when you stand before God, you'll have no excuse. Right? Because God has done everything he can to save us. So now the only thing that stands in our way is our will, our choice. You know, it doesn't matter what we were born into or what family we were born to or what problems we were born with or what wrong choices we made because there's nothing that God can undo. That's right. And the truth is that God does not hold us accountable for the choices we made when we were in ignorance. It's the choices we make when we begin to understand what we're doing. That's what he holds us accountable for. Yeah. So that victim mentality is just uh, going back to Romans 1, moving you from functioning from the principle of faith, which is reasoning from the evidence to know what's going on with your unsensed parts of you. Then that's going moving from faith to deny, deny recreating and performing, which is based on your emotions. Mm -hmm. Of course, Paul already laid that foundation clearly, right? So... Sin taken occasion by the commandment to see me and by it slew me. And that's what we were just talking about. Wherefore, the law is holy. The commandment is holy and, and just and good. See, there's no way around verse 12. See, Paul keeps talking about, you mm -hmm. know, can I, should I go on sinning? No. Is the problem the law? No. He keeps saying that the law is, the commandment is holy and just and good. There's no way around it. I don't know how people can read Romans 6 and say the law is the problem. I just don't understand that. It's just, it's mm -hmm. so clear that the law is not the problem. The problem is me. It's not the law. And if God could have changed the law, then Jesus would not have had to die. And Christ's death on the cross is the greatest evidence that the law of God has not changed. Not one jot or tittle. No, no, when, when we see God, the law of God doesn't become less. It becomes even greater, more profound. Yeah. And actually, we, we could talk about that because, you, you know, we, we talk about the law, you know, don't kill or don't commit adultery. So we think, well, I didn't do it, so I'm okay. No, what, but see, the absence of the negative is not the presence of the positive. Actually, the fulfillment of the law is to love with all your equipment. So it's not just don't beat up your neighbor. No, you're supposed to love your neighbor while he's beating you up. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. it's, so it's, it's so much, the law is so much, the, 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 role, the bar of righteousness is so much higher than what we have boiled the law down to do about the absence of the negative. So I, shouldn't, so I shouldn't have socked that guy in senior year. <laughs> 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 well, a slave has to do what he's what his slave owner says he does. But now that you're older, you can be free from that. Amen. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> yeah. So that's what he says in verse 12. This is the question. After he says the law is holy, the commandment is holy and just and good. I don't know how much more plainer he can say it in verse 12. Mm -hmm. Then he says, Was was then that which is good made death to me? No. What's his answer? Really not. No, God forbid. So the problem is the law. What's it, what's the problem? The first two words there, but sin, 
right? So the problem isn't the law. The problem is sin. But sin, that it might appear sin, working death in me by that which is good, that sin by the law, by the commandment, might become exceedingly sinful. That's, that's, his, that's the point. The more clearly I see God's law, the more sinful I see myself to be, which means the more need of God's grace and God's forgiveness and God's salvation I'm in need of. And when God restores me through that salvation, he restores me to be in harmony with the law. So that I can now produce the fruit of holiness, of wholeness. Yes. By the way, that's good news, isn't it? That, I mean, that's the gospel. Yeah. That's good news. And, this, the, and by the way, we talk about uh, others, other groups of Christians who are thrown out the law. But there, there are, there's a, a movement in Adventism telling people that they sin, they have to sin, they're going to sin, they got to keep on sinning, and they can't stop sinning. Till, till some magical moment when Jesus comes. Well, excuse me. Well, Be too late then. That's not absolutely biblical, and it doesn't jive with the lesser light as well. No. I mean, the, 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 the sign of God's people at the end, they, they have the testimony of Jesus, they, and they keep the commandments of God. They keep the commandments of God. God. Excuse me. Well, well what is sin? It's a transgression of the law. If they're keeping the commandments, are they sinning? No. No. <laughs> no. So if, they're, if, they're, if they're not keeping, if they're breaking the law, then they're sinning, which means they're not keeping the commandments, which means they're not God's people. And well, I think be- a lot of the problem is that people are trying to transform themselves and they know they can't. So then they want the law done away with because they know they can't fix themselves. And if they would just realize that what they need is a savior who will transform them from within. Yeah, so if they knew the gospel, you're saying, then they wouldn't be talking all this foolishness. Yes. But the problem with me, the problem with that, when Seventh-day Adventists run around and say that, then the the same people are going to run around saying, well, going to to church on Sunday is the mark of the beast. Say, wait a second. You just said I'm going to keep sinning till Jesus comes. What difference? Is, com, what difference is that the number of commandment I'm breaking? Hey, if I'm if it's okay to keep on sinning, then the, the keeping the keeping the Sabbath is not a test. You break one, you break them all. Right. So the idea that an Ad, Adventist people, Adventist preachers or teachers would would share that idea just blows my mind. They're doing it. Well, I know they are, but. It's not in the Bible. <laughs> do you think it's delusion that they're being sent? Or do you think that that the infiltration has begun above them? No, I, I, what, what, what's happening is that um, the gospel is being corrupt, corrupted. That's what's happening. Many people don't, don't understand the gospel. People that have been, I'm sorry, members of our church for 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 decades don't understand what the gospel is Mm -hmm. and they've accepted a form of 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 the gospel a form of godliness but there's no power there there's no transformation of their mind and their heart there's no transformation of their in in most being they're not a new creation they're just going through the motions and he already used that word motions in verse five and so it's 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 a combination of many things and when when you live your whole life under that standard, then you you begin to to bend to bend the ideas of the gospel to fit your situation rather than you being transformed to fit the gospel. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's but just to be for, to be transformed with, with from within, you have to be willing to submit to His will and give up having your way about things. Yes, and you also have to you also have to acknowledge the total depravity of your of your nature, that mm-hmm. there's no good in you. So many many of the new gospels are simply, well, yeah, you do some bad things, but you're basically a good person. You just need to develop the good that's in you to become stronger than the bad person in you, and then you're a good enough person and God will accept you. Since we all came from Adam and Eve, where did they get the good from? Yeah, well, that's a good question. <laughs> Yeah. But the point is, is that these are the these are the philosophical 
concepts that are being embedded into people's minds. And, and by the way, in society, society teaches that, right? Yeah. So, by the way, Mrs. White makes that comment, Steps to Christ, this, this lie that was being produced by psychology, the new psychology of her day, that there's good in you that just needs to be developed. Well, that's, that's a lie. There's no, nothing good in me. There's no good in me. Right? That's what Paul says. So, again, that's a feel-good a feel good philosophy that makes me somehow comfort myself that I'm okay. Right. It's also the same thing that occurs to me when somebody sees somebody that did something horrible, like say Jeffrey Dahmer or something or Hitler, and they criticize that person and they say what a terrible person they are. Well, we all came from Adam and Eve. There's a thought for you. Well, the truth is, is that many of the people that we use as poster childs for evil, evil. Yep. just um, they had opportunity to do something and they did it. Many of us, uh, there's a lot of evil in us that we had opportunity to do. And if we had the opportunity, we would have done it, but we didn't have the opportunity. So it, we didn't do it. And so we could pat ourselves on the back all we want, but God knows the truth. Mm -hmm. And by the way, Satan's going to show us, Satan's going to show human nature. We're going to see it before the end, right? We're going to get sifted like wheat, like mm -hmm. Peter, right? Because a lot of these people that are poster childs for evil are people that actually, um, their nature became so depraved that they became possessed by demons and started doing things that, and destructive things that, you know, no human could do. But we're going to be see, we're going to see that again before the end. That's frightening. Well, the Bible talks about demons taking control of people, doesn't it? Well, if you've heard anything from Massachusetts lately, you'd see it right up close. That's right, and it's become but it's going to become more and more prevalent as we get closer and closer to the end. And the if same I, as the, go ahead. And. There, but by the grace of God, go I. It could right. be any of us, right? That's right. That's right. I know Brother Craig and, and Sister Sasha used to say, do not ever venerate us. We are able, as much of, able to fall as either of you. Any mm -hmm. of you. Mm -hmm. That's right. So when, when people like Jeffrey Dahmer and, and, and um, do the things they do, they are really, it's, the devil in them that is using them to do those things. Well, there's choices being made and there's right. the equipment that has happened, but we don't know, you know, what, what's going on. We, all we see is the behavior. And of course we measure it by our own standard and say, well, something's really wrong. Well, of course something's really wrong. A welcome to a fallen world full of sinful, sinful creatures. Mm -hmm. But the idea that we would consider ourselves better than somebody else, that's the, the whole thing where that's just not the, how it works. Yeah. Well, when, we're people told, make, go ahead. when people make choices to get into things like Satan worship or witchcraft or things like that, they give the devil the right to do things like that. And I'm glad none of us ever did that, huh? Right. I've witnessed it firsthand. <laughs> a, a woman who, a man or a woman, <laughs> let's anonymize this somewhat, who is now a member of, of Doug Bachelor's Granite Bay Church in good standing and who loves the Lord, opened the door to the Necronomicon one day and almost never got back. Wow. I yeah. know her personally, him personally. Yeah. Well, if did, maybe some of you guys saw this one too, but in Virginia, there was a six-year-old that shot his teacher in the chest and pretty near killed her. I mean, absolutely. So it I, is getting it is getting worse and worse. Mm -hmm. And of course, if you believe what it says in Revelation, it's going to continue getting worse. Have we reached the point where the angels are loosening the four winds? Well, I don't think we're anywhere near that point yet. <laughs> when they do, when they do, we're gonna <laughs> we're gonna know what. Oh, and it's just well, that already. Oh, well, we we. But when you talk about the when you talk about the downside, the reason 
that it's going to get so bad is because it's there's also going to be light shining in terms of the revelation of the gospel. So the potential for for fallen creatures to be recreated in righteousness and reveal reveal the character of God and Christ is also going to be made prevalent. That's why that's what makes the evil get so evil. See, when people don't know, then God holds in check. He winks at their ignorance, and they're not subject to the consequences of what they don't understand. But once the light of the gospel shines, and mm-hmm. people begin to understand that if they choose God and they can be restored to rightness, once they reject that gift, then what? Then what? What is going to hold back the tide of evil that's going to take over their life? Nothing. And so we, you're going you're to see evil. And, and righteousness mature at the same time. That's what happens. So when you're when you're seeing a maturing of evil in society, you're also that's also evidence that there's a maturing of rightness. And you it may not be evident to you, but it's it's it is happening. Yeah, that's good. Praise God. Amen. Yes. And in, the reason the reason why you see. Go ahead, Jim. I'm sorry. I was going to say in verse fourteen, for we know that the law is spiritual. But I am carnal, sold unto sin. I think much of the um, problem is that we wrestle with flesh and blood. And Paul says that we should not be res- wrestling with flesh and blood. You know, we're dealing with principalities and powers mm-hmm. that we should be um, putting our efforts and um, intentions towards the spiritual walk, but not to fight in flesh and blood behaviors and are changing who we are but rather to focus on the spiritual nature of the holy spirit working in through us uh and not flesh and blood right so so the idea there the spiritual part is your mind and your will right Mm -hmm. whatever controls the mind and the will the spiritual part of you that's what that's what controls you and so so therefore that's how you of course put the death of the misdeeds of the body but the point that's right so th- it's a higher struggle than the behavior issue. Mm. Well, one of the things that I've started doing with some of the people that I'm trying to make some headway with over here is that I, I do spiritual warfare and I ask for God to use his angels and the Holy Spirit to, to push back the power the powers of darkness that are surrounding these people so that they can hear. Yeah. 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 The Lord only hears that prayer if you're a righteous person. Is that not true? <laughs> if you're praying the prayer, he hears you. He heard Manessa's prayer. Even if you're still struggling, uh, We're still with, struggling. With, with sin. <laughs> if We're you're not struggling, struggling, if you're not struggling, then you're not a righteous person. <laughs> Yeah, we'll get. That's the second. That's the second half of Romans seven. We'll get there. <laughs> but our but our our prayers are always heard, whether we've got a knowledge. I mean, there are people who pray who don't have a knowledge of God, but they just, when they're in a situation, they will pray and cry out. God hears every sincere prayer. Right, right. Whether right. we're still in sin and try, and He's working with us, or we've understood come to understand things and we're still working with it the person who has never acknowledged god yells out help me 50 feet before his parachute doesn't open it's not the same thing as a person who's heard about god all their life has rejected him because they've seen so many christians sin and on their deathbed someone's been praying for them and that person goes to them and and reads them the sinner's prayer and they accept it and are baptized. That's different, right? Well, I don't like, getting, what God I don't like getting involved in the process of judging where other people are and what's going on. That's God's department. Thank you. And he knows the heart and he's trying to save everyone. So I'll leave that to God and I'm not waiting in there. There's no sense, right? The point is, we're supposed to love with all of our faculties. So no matter who I encounter, I'm supposed to love them. That's that's it. And I'm not supposed to be trying to judge whether they're saved or not saved. That's not my department. I don't save people. I'm trying to I'm trying to have God save me, and I'm trying to have his all my equipment function by the principles of rightness. So I love whoever I run into, and I, and I and hopefully I'm going to do everything I can to be a blessing to someone. 
and the choices the fact- they make, that's between them and God. So I, I'm going to go back to the point that I was going to say that I think is very important. You see, you see in the time of the life of Christ, you see more demon possession than any other time in Scripture. Mm-hmm. Right? Because there's more light. Because the, the maturing of rightness in Christ and the invitation of life through Christ is so clear. That's why the, the maturing of evil is also so clear. And this is also a demonstration of what is going to happen, which we call the last days. You're, see, you're going to see a maturing of evil in the world, which is going to be very prevalent and all over the news. But there's also a maturing of rightness. God is a group of people that are growing to reflect his character and they're not as visible in the news. Right. So what God does is usually quiet and, and, and whatever. I mean, they may be in the news one day when they lay down their life for what's true, but that's not the, that's not our day. The point is, is that the, the maturing of evil and the maturing of rightness happens at the same time. That's why they happen the way they happen. And so well, that's why we're, when we see we're supposed to draw warmth from people's coldness and, and strength from their weakness. When we see the maturing of evil in the world around us and we know that there's also maturing of rightness, right? Yes, absolutely. So if the, Jewish gonna, leaders, if, the Jewish, if the Jewish leaders had not been rejecting Christ, they would not have matured toward evil the way they did. Right, that's right. Yep. It's rejecting Christ is what obviously matures evil, right? When you reject the light, then greater the dark, you're you're left in greater darkness. That's the that's the principle. That's a law. I mean, the, the, these things we're talking about are laws or principles. So the same <laughs> laws that govern us are the same laws that govern our society. So next time we get together next week, we're going to talk about Romans seven fourteen through twenty five. And he's going to kind of deal with the battle that's going on inside us and um, how that's dealt with. Questions, comments? God is good, isn't he? Amen. Love that would not let us go. (laughs) So I have a question. So as the two are moving at the same time that behooves us as Christians who know Jesus and understand what he's calling us to pray for the evil ones even as that's going on right well yeah first of all we're, we're praying we're praying for ourselves to grow right, right? Mm-hmm. because the light shines through God's people and then we're we're praying for situations like you know, Brother Roy just prayed for mm-hmm. his neighbors to come to a series. We just prayed for um, my friend John Baker's house is on fire. I mean, you pray as you see needs. You call upon right. the Father, right. and you, and you ask God if it's God's will to intervene. God will intervene, yes. right? But we're right. checking ourselves constantly, not not saying, "Oh, look at you know Jeffrey Dahmer. He's a real bad guy." No, well, that's me. You know, I'm now I'm not, you know, that's not what happens. So as I see issues, I'm checking myself. Do I have those issues? And if the answer is no, then I'm lying to myself and I need to go back to check again. Well, they've proven, I mean, science groups have proven that when people are given power, they can become incredibly evil. Oh, no kidding. Absolute power corrupts absolutely. Who said that anyway, Pastor Tim? Oh, I don't know. I heard that phrase a long time ago in history. Yep. Power corrupts absolute power corrupts absolutely. That's how it works. I heard it too, and I thought it came from the Bible, but I guess it doesn't, right? No, that's the history saying. It was last night when I heard uh, the the quote, manifest destiny, when it came to conquering. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> yeah Never did we got a manifest that. destiny all right <laughs> it's called <laughs> burn baby burn <laughs> well there was what it means there was some truth to that lie but anyway i won't get into the history yeah because america was destined to be a god a christian a godly nation 
Mm-hmm. Um, sadly enough, the people who came who claimed to be Christians <laughs> weren't very good Christians. Yeah. But and uh, by, by the way, uh, which of us are right? Yes, true. Both those points are true. Yeah. But anyways, well, I'll close with prayer, and then we can. Those who want to stay in chat, we can do so. Dear Heavenly Father, of the love that would not let us go, thank you so much for your word. You know, we wrestle with Paul. He seems to jump around and sometimes make our minds do pretzels. But uh, actually, you're just fixing the wiring so that we can think straight and see things clearly. And when we catch a vision of what you're writing through Paul, it makes so much sense. And we realize that the problem is, is us. It's not your word. It's the problem is our sin. It's not your law. Uh, the problem is our selfishness. It's not your your beauty and your grace. Father, we thank you for your love. We thank you for the life, the death, and the resurrection of Christ that gives us life. And we ask for the gift of your Holy Spirit, that you will guide us into all truth, that you will pour your love into our hearts, that somehow in spite of ourselves, that we will reflect the character, the character of Christ. We, this we ask in Jesus' name. Amen.